and in a very hot, it was like 80 degrees, I was in Costa Rica, and now it's snowing here, and, and uh, we have one of our Costa Ricans here, that's home, and uh, we, I got to see some really great stuff while I was out there, maybe we can put up some pictures on our uh, e-bulletin or something so you can see some of what I was doing out there, but I was going to meet with some ministry school students that are a part of a satellite school from here, and uh, they ended up having a hurricane that went through a couple of days before I got there, and so I ended up helping with some hurricane relief. Went out in the mountains, just in the middle of nowhere, power lines were down, people were like growing their own food, that's how far out like in the middle of nowhere that we were at. We drove two hours one way just to find people, and uh, it was intense. It was really, really great being out there. Uh, my cologne was uh, mosquito repellent. There were so many mosquitoes out there, and uh, got to see a lot of really, really great things. I brought a lot of food to people and clothes, and also got to pray for several people. Jesus just showed up. He really, he likes those people a lot. And uh, as we started just praying for people, saw a lot of miracles happen. One, this lady had a growth on the bottom of her foot, and it dissolved right there. We were praying for her. She couldn't find it, had no pain in her foot. Uh, another lady had fallen down some steps and uh, injured herself a couple of days before. And I just noticed it. She didn't ask for prayer, but she was walking like this. And I was sitting in the SUV that we're all in as a couple of them ran out to hand a couple of things and we're going to get back in because that's not even where we're supposed to be. We're driving somewhere and we saw some people jumped out, a couple of people jumped out to give them some food real quick. And then we we're running. And I saw this lady limping really heavily and I jumped out went and asked her what happened, prayed for her. And she got instantly healed. She just began to weep on the side of the road. She's running up and down the side of the road, jumping up and down. And she's speaking uh, Spanish to everybody around her, what's going on with her. And then uh, I had her. She, said, she told me she said she feels like her whole body's on fire. And I said, that's God. God's just touching you. She didn't know anything about this stuff. I didn't say when I pray for you, you could feel something. I just prayed for her. And then I asked her how she felt. She had no pain. My body feels it. So I started taking her around and having her help me pray for other people. And, uh, and she had never done anything like that before. She didn't even go to a church somewhere, but she believed in Jesus, but she didn't go to the church. And so uh, as she was helping me pray for people, other people started getting healed. I had her help translate as I shared the gospel as a crowd of people came around to get stuff and get prayer, prayed for several others, uh, and people got saved. She got to pray with them to receive Christ there. And uh, it was just a good, normal day. It was fun. <laughs> Just going out, loving people, and saw lots of other miracles happen. We went and in homes where their floors were dirt floors, and just seeing the poverty that was there in, uh, up in the mountains was pretty significant. And uh, so uh, it, was, it was a really powerful time. Yeah, but I'm glad to be home, glad to be back here, and uh, thank you for allowing me to go as a church family. That means a lot to me that uh, you guys can invest and see that that's something that's on our lives to, to do some of that. But while I was gone, you guys partied or something. You guys just had a, a good time here is what I heard. And so I was glad to see that happen. And, uh, yeah, so a little bit on Costa Rica. Maybe we'll put some pictures up. I want to make you aware of that there's someone that's a, a part of our church family that's real in need. I'm not going to give any specific details for their privacy sake, but uh, they are in pretty desperate need of $222. If you, and this is so they have a roof over their head. And uh, they would need that by Tuesday. Unfortunately, in our church budget, we don't have an extra $222 to uh, be able to go to that ourselves. But I want to make it known to you, if anybody here or somebody is watching online, if you want to donate towards that, it would go towards... Uh, some housing, and also uh, we want to try to help work out an, another situation. And so, uh, if anybody has a room for rent or knows somebody that does, uh, come and talk to me, and I'll see if I can put you in touch. Even if you're watching a line, you know something you want to step in, uh, because this is a 222 for a hotel. Really, that's not a very good situation. And so, we want to try to find better housing if we can. And so I just want to put that out there. You guys can ask me questions after the service if you want. If you want to give to that, just talk to me. I'll, I'll help get you information, all right? All right. 
It's good to be back. So glad to be with you guys. So I have some questions I like to ask. And those that have called us home, you guys know I like to ask you questions because we really feel that it's important to understand that our lives are more than a Sunday morning event. And as a church family, we want to recognize that when we leave from here, we're being sent out. And kind of the spirit of Luke chapter 9 where Jesus sends some people out. He sends his 12 out. And then they come back and they report back to him what happened while they were gone. And so uh, I, you'll find sometimes I re-say things again and again. And if you already know what I'm talking about, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people that don't know what I'm already talking about. And so the uh, reason that we do that is we really want us to engage our lives and recognize we're bringing Jesus out into wherever we're going. And so with that being said, I want to ask a handful of questions for you guys, and then we're going to get into the message this morning. And at the end of the service, we're going to commission you guys out into your week and what God is going to have for you this week. So one question here is, let me see, with the raising of your hands, who here took some time to pray, kind of like to intercede, pray quiet, or pray yourself just with God for uh, other people in your lives, for the community, for the church? How many like to spend some time praying? Brothers this week, that's fantastic, I love it. All right, cool. Uh, How many here prayed for somebody for like healing, something like that this week? Actually prayed for somebody, that's fantastic, I love that. Jesus wants to see that happen, and uh, I just love that you guys are going for it. How many people here prophesied to someone this week? Just felt like God showed you something and gave them to them? Come on, that's so good. And uh, how many... People here invited somebody to Convergence this week. Awesome. Very cool. All right, last one here is, you know, I'm going to add one more question here. It's going to be a surprise question, so you don't know that, what it is yet. The, uh, so two questions. The other one here is, how many shared on your social media either the service from last week or something about Convergence Center? Good job, man. And Cheryl, fantastic. <laughs> All right, good, good. If you're raising your hand out there and watching us on our YouTube channel, thank you. I see that hand in my mind. The, uh, so that's a great way. You guys can share stuff on social media, get things out, and it's a great way to connect with people. We do have a YouTube channel, and uh, just look up Convergence Center to find it if you want to. And uh, my last question here is, who took some time to actively receive love from God this week? That's hugely important. So glad you did that. I recommend that you do that on a regular basis. Just actively, God, I just actively receive your love. I'm not talking about if you felt something or not, but that you just said, God, I actively receive your love. You were created by love to receive love and to become love. That's really what this whole thing is about. And so I'm glad that you guys did that. Cool. All right. Let's pray. I'm really excited about what's on my heart this morning. God, I thank you for what you're saying and what you're doing in our day. And I ask that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Help us to know, to understand, and be empowered to live out what you are placing in our hearts and our lives. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. So we decided to kind of mix it up a little bit. You might have noticed some uh, tables that are out. Normally just had chairs, but there's a school that meets here during the week, and so I decided to just leave out some tables and see how that felt. And so you actually should have received a bulletin when you came in. On the back of it, you have a place you can write notes. And one person already this morning said, that means I can, put my, I can put this right on the table and make notes. And so if you want to take notes of anything, you can or draw something, make faces on it, whatever you want to do. You, got, you have something there you can set your stuff on. And uh, so, you guys like the tables, or you prefer seating? What do you guys think? It's interesting. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Table, tables, tables, too. Okay, I hear it. most people are saying tables. That's interesting. Uh, so, also on the inside of here, you have your connect card. If everybody pull that out, as I start getting into the message this morning... If you could just start filling that out, you have a table to write on if you 
uh, need a pen, this is a great time to get to know somebody next to you. Ask them if you could borrow one real quick. And just start filling that out. I'd like to have everybody do that. Our first time guest today, we have a personalized art piece for you. It's not going to be as big as this one here, but you'll be able to have a, your own art piece you take home with you today. And we also email and mail out gifts. And so please fill that out. Mark on here if it's your first or second time or if you're family. Everybody start filling these out 100%. This is so good. On the back of it, you can write uh, a praise report, something you're thanking God for, or a prayer request. If you want to get involved with things, you can check that off. So there's something for you. We live in a culture of people that like to do multiple things at one time. So as I'm getting started in the message, you got something else you can do at the same time there, filling out your connection card. Anyway, uh, I'm really glad it started snowing this morning. It's starting to feel like Christmas. We're in December, and I didn't grow up around snow. Like I, I grew up in Georgia, and it snowed like every other year, and like half, <laughs> somebody liked it, uh, and uh, this is your first snow, right? So you, yeah, it's first snow, so when I was growing up, you'd appreciate this, everything closed down, and if I was in school, everybody would run to the windows and look outside, oh, well, there's snow, and later on, I moved to Minnesota and lived there, as I like to call Minnesota, it was so much snow, you'd have to have like a huge blizzard to go through for the schools to be closed down. Where I grew up, everything closed if like half an inch fell down. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a very different experience. But part of me still, even though I was in the South and didn't snow much, something about snow always equated to Christmas for me. And so uh, I get in December, we feel Christmas music starting to play. Maybe if you don't like that, you're trying to find a radio station that's not playing Christmas music because a lot of them are right now. It just starts feeling about Christmas. And I really feel that uh, for today, Christmas is really about God speaking to people. Christmas is really a lot about God speaking to people. Think about this here. Let me read a couple of verses to you. John chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. Everybody say Word. 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 <laughs> and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Word. Word up. It's fresh. All right. Depends on how long you've been a Christian, if that was meant anything to you or not. All right. And verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw His glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's verse 1 and verse 14. This is speaking about Jesus. The Bible says he is the word and he became flesh and dwelt among us. It was when Jesus came, it was an expression of God speaking. Okay. Listen to this another way. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says God, this is Hebrews 1, 1 and, verses 1 and 2, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets and Many portions and in many ways in these last days has spoken to us. Everybody say spoken. spoken. He has spoken to us in his son, whom, we have, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the world. That's Hebrews chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2. Really, Jesus' coming is an expression of God speaking. Christmas is about God Speaking, And I'm going to get more into what God was saying through Jesus coming on our Christmas service, either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. We'll kind of figure that out and let you know, but we want, I'm going to get more into what is he saying? What was he saying by Jesus coming? What I want to get into today is that it's not just Christmas this season is, and Jesus coming is not just God speaking through Jesus coming. There's also an expression of this where God is speaking through what Jesus has done in us. If you're a follower of Jesus, it's not just Jesus coming, but it's also what Jesus has done in our lives personally. It's like uh, many times when, uh, it, well, think about it this way. When I'm, I'm teaching students, I've got to teach hundreds of students, and uh, I've really positioned my heart to not just teach to them, but to teach through them. 
And so I think about the people's lives that they are going to impact, that they are carrying something and bringing that out. In the same way, when Jesus came, he wasn't just coming to you as the voice of God. He was coming through you. And that's why Jesus said, as I was sent, so am I sending you. The word of God came, and he came, and he's done things in our lives. And then what he's done in our lives becomes his voice in someone else's life. So what, just go with me here to Mark chapter 5. I'll unpack this just for a couple of minutes. Mark chapter 5. I think this is important during this Christmas season as we're interacting maybe with friends or family. Some of you guys are traveling really soon and uh, interacting with some of those. And also just kind of the spirit of the season as people are, are uh, maybe even more open to hearing about Jesus during this season than other times. And so I just want to look at this for just a moment. Verses 18 to 20 in Mark chapter 5. This right here is where Jesus had sailed across some water and he, he encountered a guy that was really being attacked by demons. And the Bible says he was demon-possessed, he was demonized. And Jesus brought incredible deliverance to the guy, set him free from the demons that were attacking. And just for, for the sake of those that are new to us, new faces don't know us, Convergence Center we believe that God is still alive, that God still does the things that he said he did, or the things that he did do in the Bible. We also believe that the devil's real, is not an imaginary figure, and that there, are, there is an enemy out there that's not for you and wants to destroy you. And I thank God that gr the Bible tells us very clearly, greater is he who is in you than the one who is in the world. And so we have this encounter happening where the great one meets someone that is being attacked by the lesser one. And Jesus sets him free, and the guy's really excited about it. We pick this up in verse 18. He says, as he, this is Jesus, as he was getting into the boat about to head out, the man who had been demon-possessed was imploring him or begging him that he might accompany him. But Jesus did not let him, but said to him, go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And he went away to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. God has a message, and it was Jesus coming, but also God has a message through you. And the message is what God has done in your life. Just like this guy, he didn't have to have a Ph.D. to bring the love of Jesus to where he came from. All he had to have was his own story. Yeah. All he had to bring was himself and what God had done in his life. And Jesus was confident that what was done in his life was enough to set the platform for that person to have something done in their own lives. And so that's really good for anyone that's like, I don't, you know, I don't feel qualified. I don't know if I have all the answers for people. People have all these questions. And some people don't share what God Share about Jesus because they're afraid of not having the right answers of something. What I'm suggesting to you is that what God has done in your life is your message. What God has done in you, he is confident that him in you along with what he's done in you will help connect someone with his goodness for their own life. You don't have to have all the answers, but you do just need to have your own story. So think about this and John chapter 4, the Bible tells us Jesus met a woman at the well, if you're familiar with the Bible. He has this interaction with her. He releases a prophetic word about her life and who she is. She takes this message back to her people. And if you go back and read the context, she told all the people in her city and her village about what Jesus had said to her. He, he, she went and told them, he told me everything about my life. And then the end result of that was all those people that she shared that with, they themselves began to believe in Jesus just because of a story that she told. So what we're really just kind of parking on here this morning is Christmas is about God speaking. And God wants to speak something through us. It's so wonderful to think about What God has done in our lives can multiply 
and help somebody else out. But it takes us just taking a time to share our God stories. I want to give you three keys of things that happen when you share what God has done in your life. One is telling your God story brings people into an encounter with God. Think about that woman at the well. She told her own story in John chapter 4, and you go back and read it. Those people heard her, and then they came to see Jesus for themselves. And when they came to see Jesus for themselves, they told her, we liked what you told us, but now because we met him for ourselves, we believe. And this is really, it's not our job to make anybody believe. It's not our job to try to get somebody to say a prayer and give their lives to Jesus. That's not our assignment. Our assignment is to be a witness. And this is what Jesus did so many times. He either sent people out with, uh, with power themselves because they were putting on display a powerful God that there is this God who exists. And as you experience a miracle, it reveals that God exists. Or he sent them out with their own story of power, that what God did in their own lives. And all of these things help to connect people to their own encounter with God. And so as they hear your story, or maybe you have a prophetic word, you take a moment and you stop somebody and say, listen, this might sound really weird, but I believe that God speaks to people and I felt like God showed me something for you. Can I, can I try it out on you? You tell me if I'm right or wrong. As you're loving people and releasing what God is telling to you for them, you bring that encounter to them. Or if you're out and you're telling what God has done in your own life. You know, sometimes we, we go through our day and people ask, well, how are you doing? I'm all right. Well, sometimes I'm all right isn't enough. Maybe that interaction can go further by including what God is doing in your life. Because, again, your story, what God is doing in you, becomes an encounter for them. The next thing here is your story brings credibility to the reality of God. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people pretty skeptical out there. And they'll maybe watch somebody on TV who's talking about Jesus or seeing something happen, they're like, oh, that's fake. I remember being in a, uh, a, a visiting a church and some people were giving a testimony and this one lady said, listen, I just want to thank God. You guys all know that uh, I, I had uh, come, been diagnosed with a brain tumor and uh, this, she told this story that she was, now had a clean report that she didn't have a brain tumor anymore. And everybody's all excited. It's fantastic. But she said, I'll tell you what happened. Is I was flipping through the TV and I saw Benny Hinn on there. And she said, uh, not that I believe in Benny Hinn or anything, but I just decided to stop because I was bored. And he started talking. And uh, not that I believe in Benny Hinn or anything, but I was just standing there and felt like I, I should keep watching him. And then he said, there's somebody there who's watching who has a brain tumor. And uh, not that I believe in Benny Hinn or anything, but I just thought that was really interesting that he said that. And then he said, there's somebody watching this. You got that brain tumor. If you'll put your hand on the TV, I'm going to pray for you, and God's going to heal you. And she said, not that I believe in Benny Hinn or anything, but I decided why not. And so I put my hand there on the TV. I'm here listening to this in person, this lady give this testimony. So she's like, I put my hands on the TV, and, and she said, and he prayed. And not that I believe in Benny Hinn or anything, but all of a sudden my head started getting really hot and just felt really good. And then... Uh, I went to the doctor and got the reports back after they, they looked in things. And not that I believe in Benny Hinn or anything, but the report came that the tumor's completely gone. Everybody praised Jesus. It was Jesus, not Benny Hinn. And I thought, poor Benny Hinn. He's not going to hear from her that he had to step out in faith, not knowing. And he won't know from her, not knowing what, you know, what was going to happen. And he's not going to hear from her because all she could say every other, literally every other sentence was not that I believe in Benny Henry. So people have this like cynical, just because they're on TV, that means that they're a fraud automatically. And so what happens is God says, I'm going to send you into the world 
Because your life brings credibility to somebody that maybe my life wouldn't, or somebody on TV or somebody other situation wouldn't bring credibility, but people know you. That's what happened with the woman of the well because they, they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say because they knew her. Her life brought credibility to what she was saying. And so in the, I remember somebody showing up at my door uh, years ago. I was about 14 years old. Went outside. It was about 10 at night, and uh, this gentleman was staying there. He was the uncle of one of my friends. And he said, I don't even know how I got here. He said, I was on the highway and I was ready to commit suicide. I had a car that I picked out and I was about to gun it and, and run into this car and see if I could kill myself. And he said, I don't remember anything after that. Uh, I don't even know. I came to pulling into your driveway. And he started crying. I'm 14 years old. And he, this is an uncle of, my, of one of my friends. He was like the life of the party, really fun guy. Uh, always kind of had a woman on his arm and things he was going on and doing, but he just started crying there to this 14-year-old and saying, and this is what he said. He said, I don't know what you have and what happened to you, but I want to have what you have. And he said, I know your life because I lived on the same street. He knew what was going on in my life. He knew the background that I came from. He knew the situation, and he knew something was going on with me that was different than he was. Your story, when you share, because you have relationship with people, and this is something that we encourage here at, at Convergence Center, is for us to not isolate and become our own little bubble of people, but that we are people that are actively involved in our community, that we're people that are involved in a build, purposely building relationships with people. Maybe you should go to the same restaurant or the same grocery store, not just because they have the best prices, but so that you build relationship with somebody there. We encourage you guys to do that so that your light can shine, so someone can hear your story. As they get to know you, then as you share what God has done in you, the very fact that they know you builds credibility to them. Your story builds credibility to what God is doing. And so don't just depend on a preacher. Don't just depend on something else that's going on. You share your story. You be involved in people's lives because God wants, to, God wants to speak to them. But maybe he wants to speak to them through you. You guys okay? All right. Last key here is telling your, well, actually I have another key. <laughs> I have a surprise key. Telling your story keeps you encouraged. Telling your story keeps yourself, because sometimes you can get along in your life and kind of forget, get disconnected, not literally forget, but be disconnected from what God has done in the past. The Bible tells us that there's a guy named David who became a king in Israel, and he went through a very difficult time where some raiders came in, took everything from them, and they were left with nothing, took their wives and all their stuff, while him and the men were out helping somebody else in a battle. And then the people that he was with wanted to turn on him and blame him for it. You find that in leadership. If something's not going the way people want, they normally go to the leader and say, this is all your fault. And so uh, he had this happen. And the Bible says that he encouraged himself in the Lord, reminded himself of who God is and what God has done. And it's good to do that personally, but there's something about Sharing your story with somebody else that encourages yourself, that keeps you connected with what God has done before. And as you share that story with other people, it doesn't just bring them with an, an encounter with God, it brings you into an encounter with God as well. And so when you share testimonies, when you share these God stories, what God has done through your life to other people, it gives God glory. It, were, it brings praise to God as you are celebrating his goodness in your life and it encourages you because every time we bring glory to God, there's a result that happens in us. The result that happens to us as we praise God is we are encouraged. The Bible says that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. When we're lifting him up, we're exalting who he is, he comes and encourages us as well. And so as another part, sharing your story encourages you. And so as you're out with family or friends or you're talking with people, then share your story. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Remember what God has done in your past. 
relive those moments with somebody else. God is good. And sometimes we can get caught up in where we're at and forget what God has done in the past. Last point here. I told you I had three. I lied. It was an accident. It was on the next page. It's four. I have four. Uh, the fourth one here is your story is God's vengeance. Your story is God's vengeance. And I, I really like how my friend Robbie Dawkins just puts this so powerfully that the revenge of God is when God takes somebody who doesn't deserve mercy and gives them mercy. That's the revenge of God. But there's, the Bible says, vengeance is mine. Don't repay someone else with evil, but give good. Make room for the vengeance of God. As you tell your story, it invites the vengeance of God because God remembers who the real enemy is. And maybe the person that you're interacting with is someone who has gone through situations in their life that have set up who they are. And if they would have their heart free and alive, then they wouldn't be reacting the way that they are. They don't know that they're loved. And so as you share your God stories that God did something in me, I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. God came and moved in my life. That creates the platform for God to come and land on. That is the vengeance of God where the enemy regrets having ever touched your life because what he did in your life becomes a platform that destroys what he's doing in someone else. That's the vengeance of God. He sets other people free and the enemy's like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that to them now. Now there's so many other people getting set free because of that. <laughs> Share your story. It's the vengeance of God. So what is your story? Do you remember what God has done in your life? Do you get to celebrate it, think about it, thank God for it on your own time? Do you know how to share your story? Has anybody ever told you how to share Jesus with somebody? If we're moving into the season, it's a great time, great time to be able to do that. I have a recommendation for you, a couple here. One is to interweave testimonies interweave your God stories into conversations with people. So as you're talking with people and they're like, how was your weekend? You could say, it was good, if you want to. Or you could say, this weekend I heard about somebody who had a growth on the bottom of her foot and got prayed for and it disappeared. Isn't that crazy? Have you ever seen anything like that before? All of a sudden, you're telling a God story and moving in. Interweave what God has done in you. I'm telling you that because you can use that. That happened. You guys heard the story. You can take that and run with it. I heard somebody this weekend, I heard about somebody that fell down some stairs and could barely walk and receive prayer and was healed. Have you ever seen anything like that? Is that crazy or what? I just gave you something to talk about. Or maybe you have your own story. You got several of you raising your hands about you prayed for somebody or you prophesied. Interweave those into your conversation. The second kind of thing here I recommend to you is be interesting. Don't be boring. <laughs> don't, don't be boring. Sometimes we're, we need to say some things that, you know, you have this woman at the well interaction in John chapter 4. And when you go back and read it, Jesus said, I will give you water and you'll never thirst again. And she's like, what? I want that. Right? Be interesting. Say something intriguing. I remember uh, offering to pray for somebody sometime back. And uh, when I came up to him, I thought I would just do something fun. And so I said, listen, this might sound really crazy, but I've been trained in an ancient Middle Eastern art of releasing healing. And uh, I said, could I practice on you? <laughs> and, and he said, yeah. So basically, I just prayed for him. You know, I just said, I, I told him, I said, all right, this is what we're going to do. I said, I'm going to put my hand on you. I'm going to pray for you in Jesus' name. And that's going to release healing in your body. And then I want you to try it out and see if you feel any better. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
but people have this stuff, you know, people are open to, you know, take, it, take advantage of where somebody is at and bring them into an encounter. That's what Jesus did. I, she's getting water. He took advantage of that. I got water you don't know about. You get my water, you won't be thirsty again. She's like, really? I don't want to come here and draw water. What do you got? What do I got to do to get it? Be interesting. Say something that throws somebody off guard. And you're like, and they're like, what did you just say? Be interesting. Tell your God story in a way that's fun. Because you serve an incredible God, and what God has done in your life is interesting. It's fun. It's amazing. It's incredible, and it needs to be told to somebody else. They need to meet somebody who's had something happen in their life that's not boring because their lives are boring. And so release the love of God in a way that is really fun for them and just say, you know, uh, we, we believe that Jesus still touches and heals people's lives. Do you have any pain in your body or have somebody in your family? You could pray for them. All right, let's pray for them. You know, be interesting, bring God into it. That's really sharing your story. Or if somebody's talking about something, you could say, look, this right here is what happened in my life when Jesus really came in. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but, you know, this is, this is my story. Jesus made a difference for me. And just see where they're at. Interact with people. Love on them. All right? So in kind of the spirit of Christmas as we're in December, I want to commission you to go into your world to share your God stories. I'm going to ask my wife to come up. She brought with her a ukulele today. She's going to get that set up. And so as we're in this Christmas season, I asked if she would play the song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. When you tell your story, when you take the time, not only to just encourage yourself, but when you tell your story to people, you're telling about how the Word became flesh in your own life. And the Word wants to become flesh in their lives. And so as we're here in this Christmas season, we really want you to have that feeling. Go and tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. You might not say Jesus Christ is born with those words, but when you tell your story, you're telling people, Jesus Christ is born. Let's sing this together. What I love about um, what we're going to do now is the ukulele is really quiet. Like, it's a really quiet instrument, and it feels really small. So I love playing it at home because it's just fun. It's just me. Um, and what I love about it, as we're singing this, picturing, like, we just have our story. Like, it feels small. Like, it feels like this little thing. But that's all God's asking us to do, is just to tell our story. So this morning, I'm just going to play my ukulele. And it's like we're sitting in my living room at home and just singing. So it'll be fun. The words will be up on the screen if you don't know. So let's sing this little song together. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone.
tell it. Somebody, and I really feel like this is uh, specifically for today to release in this house and those that are watching here because I actually had something different that was I was preparing and while I was worshiping this week, the Lord just gave me this download. This is what he, I feel like God is going to give you opportunities to release your story, what God has done in your life over this Christmas season. So pay attention to that. God wants to highlight that to you because as you share your God stories to people, their lives are going to be changed and you are going to be encouraged. Go and tell it. Jesus said, you are a city on a hill. Go and tell it on the mountains. (laughs) Jesus Christ is born and it changes everything. Amen? Amen? Amen. In just a moment, we're going to commission you out. Before we do that, we're going to go tell it with our pocketbooks. Yeah. You know, we speak with our money, right? What we put our money to has our voice behind it as well. And so we're going to receive this morning's offering. Uh, We present money in a way here that you're, you're not required to give. And we're not telling you that if... Uh, You don't give, God's going to be angry with you, and your life is going to fall apart. But we do present that this this house, uh, we rent here the things that we do, things we're a part of. It costs money to do it, just the way that it is. We are a faith-supported, a a support-based faith organization. And so Convergence Center doesn't have, like, grants or something like that. If we don't have people that are giving, we we won't meet. It's just the way that it is. And so some of you may even be praying about end-of-the-year giving, things like that. Some people do those. If that's been on your heart, Convergence Center is a great place to, to invest that giving into. I really feel that God is doing a groundbreaking work and is about to break some new ground, and your giving is a part of that. So I really thank you. If, you want to, if you're watching online you want to give online, you can go to convergencepa.com. That's PA for Pennsylvania, convergencepa.com, and you can give online. And uh, some of you give online instead of on Sunday morning, which is great. You can do that as well. But we want to send this out. We want to let our voices be heard, and together, as we give, our voices can be heard in this community and bring Jesus Christ glory. Is that right? It really is. So if you're writing a check, you can make it out to the Convergence Center. You have an envelope you can give by. A credit card, just don't go in debt to do it. Be responsible in your giving. 